How's it going everybody? Today we are heading out to Ritchie Brothers down in Morris. It's uh, definitely the biggest auction in this region. So figured I'd take everybody along for the ride. See what we can find today. And here we are. If nobody's ever been down here or to any of these large Ritchie Brothers auctions, I would definitely suggest you come check it out. The yard sizes do vary, and I think this is, you know, on the upper upper end of the the size, but the sheer amount of equipment that goes through here is just massive. This is a multi-location sale um, in like the Great Lakes region, and I as of now with two days till the auction I believe there's over 1800 items already listed just in Chicago alone it's a huge 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 facility it's kind of sad because prior to COVID they would run two rings in here um, and you'd have probably a couple of thousand people coming to look live look and bid and now it's just kind of a ghost town after everything happened with the pandemic but we're gonna go take a walk i should also mention that every time i'm here it's either raining snowing or like 95 degrees and today is the 95 degrees and i wore all black because I'm an idiot. So this will be a fun couple of hours. You know, here's the first one to look at. Trucks like these, I don't typically do a lot of, but they are good quick sellers. Everybody needs a cheap, reliable pickup truck. I can hear that already. It's got a 4.3 little six cylinder in it. The price of fuel where it's at nowadays. I think people might appreciate these. So what do we got? Basic work truck, manual windows, but we have working air conditioning and we have cruise control and I don't know about anybody else, but if I have AC and cruise, I'm pretty happy. No dash lights and 146,000 miles. It's probably got $110 worth of fuel in it too. You're not really allowed to drive anything around when you're out here, but you can go forward, back it up. Two short little tests main thing to look for is just any noises any reason why it might have ended up here the biggest difference that i would say between richie and some of the other auctions i go where you're specifically dealing with fleet vehicles that are retired simply based on year or age or year or mileage a lot of the stuff that ends up here is usually here for one reason or another. And that's, that's not always the case, but I would say out of every place I go, I definitely end up with more vehicles with issues that I wasn't aware of or you have a trans issue once you actually get it out onto the road and get it into gear. This would be a good little truck for somebody wheel drive long bed six cylinder I actually just bought one identical to this um, last week I don't know if I'll include that in anything maybe if I don't end up getting this one where you can see from start to finish I'll do a little video series on putting that one back together to see where you can start out because the the barrier to entry on vehicles like this to make some money is pretty low and that one needs a little bit of body work in the front. 
Moving on, this whole row pretty much clear down to the highway is all going to be pickups. For no real good reason, I don't do a lot of two-wheel drive trucks and I don't do a lot of half tons. Um, you just end up with more of a typical consumer buyer in that regard and you're dealing with people that might not be able to write a business check and they have to go about getting financing and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but it's not something that I care to deal with it looks like both of these rows are, are small vehicles we got cars on the other side This is definitely the Ford section over here. Got a bunch of 11 to 16 Super Duties. I don't know about you guys, but a nice single cab with oversized tires on stock wheels with the tank and the box and everything in it. I think they're just good looking trucks. I might be a little biased, but that's still my opinion. If you want to look like a somebody, but absolutely hate every minute of your existence, you can get yourself a nice loaded 6.4. It'll look good in your driveway when the Uber's picking you up every morning. These five here are ones that I'm definitely interested in. I know the company that they come from and they do end up having a ton of miles on them, but I've personally never come across a company that does a better job with a maintenance regiment. So we have 293,000 on this one. Fires right up. No engine noise. Let's check the air. Sometimes it's nice to just get in one of these and sit around for five or ten minutes. Typical work truck. Looks like it's got a newer coolant reservoir. I know on the diesels of this era, the coolant reservoirs end up discoloring and it causes the sensor in them for coolant level to freak out, essentially say that the truck's low on coolant. So I don't know if that carries over to the gas trucks or not but that'd probably be my guess when I'm looking at something like this or even these next few down here I'm looking at all the accessories that are on the truck as well so I know in my head with this one if I'm buying this truck I can reasonably expect to get anywhere from 600 to a thousand bucks back out of this topper. It's it's the right color. It's easy sell. It doesn't have any drawers or anything in it, but I don't know if anybody's ever looked to see what these things are new, but they are not cheap. We have Looks to be pretty damn good rubber all the way around. Nothing special back here. I like that Chevy did finally figure out that you can do an extended cab with a real door. And these tires are brand new. You can still see the knobbies on right on the face of them.
and they're all like that. They put a thousand bucks worth of rubber on this thing just to help somebody else out. You can see a little bit starting here, but that's something you can treat and either put flares on, which I'm personally not a fan of, or you can just paint it or POR it and go from there. Let's do a little function test on this one. Oh yeah, that AC is going nice. So we have factory brake controller, automatic lights, power, pretty much everything floor shift four wheel, which I love. Let's go forward. No clunks, quick shift. Let's put it in neutral. Four wheel drive, light comes on. I got resistance. I don't have any popping or any weird stuff like that. All in all, nice truck. It seems like at every one of these auctions, there ends up being something wild. I think the last time there was a 1970 Electra, Bu uh, Buick Electra 225 six door limousine. And now we got a, a Willys on some sort of modern frame with a little small block in it so here's a lot of the miscellaneous timed got an eight foot pro plus plow somebody left the receiver pockets on it that's 250 300 bucks nowadays chippers is arrow boards Oh man, all of the people that are in their early 20s with diesel trucks right now are just feeling some sort of way in their pants to a big old hook like that. Typically I have absolutely no use for arrow boards, but I'm actually kind of curious about this little guy here. And I believe, yeah, this one here next to it. For a long time now, these have all been battery solar, but these are old school diesel engines and they're just little single cylinder Lombardini engines. All they do is just drive a alternator, but if they're not locked up, It's a good little cheap engine. 1,334 hours on that meter at least. Probably real. And same story on here, but I always thought they'd make a good little portable gen set. If you take the lights off, scrap them, sell them on eBay, depending on your patient's level, and hack it down to a trailer. The whole bottom of this is a fuel tank. A little single cylinder engine if you just need a uh, need a quick little generator to run an off-grid property or something like that. I don't know. That's 
that's how I'm always thinking is what can I make out of half of this junk that nobody wants and we got a fuel pump These end up going for 100 to 250 bucks. It's a good cheap way to get into a good running engine. Here's the dead row. Kind of just a hodgepodge of pretty much anything. think that it extends over there. It's going to be clustered mostly in this area. There's a few newer trucks over here that I'm curious to look at, see if we can't figure out why they ended up out here. There's the first one. This Cummins over here. Just take a second and look at how clean this thing is. We got bees. We had bees. A small block. actually came here to look at. I don't remember the year exactly. I think it's a 14 or newer Cummins. Decently clean truck. and everything look good. Good rubber on it. Long box. There's $600 right here. I always sell those transfer tanks. Yeah, we're starting to rust a little bit, but nothing wild. Now this is a newer one because it's got coil spring in the rear. I don't remember exactly when they started that. Huh. Let's see what we got. Here's another one I definitely want to take a look at once I get my jumper. This is actually from that same company as those high mileage pickups. Let's see if we get anything off the key. We'll be back. Uh, I got the jumper on it. Let's see what we got. <laughs> well, I can feel the torque of the starter as it's engaging the flywheel, so there's a very slight chance it's a flywheel issue or something like that but it probably needs an engine 
sucks because it's a clean truck. If it went cheap, it might be worth putting a motor in, but it'd have to be cheap, cheap. We're back at this newer Silverado flat uh, utility body. We got it. All right. No one's messed with this one yet because somebody decided it was smart to put the sticker right where the hood opens, so I tried to cut it as neatly as possible. Let's see what we got. Yeah, nothing. Let me double check the battery. Make sure I didn't reverse those. Not that I was a big fan of GM side post, but these aren't any smarter, in my opinion. Still nothing. Yeah. Huh. It's an old railroad service truck here. Took the high lift rail gear off of it. Nice seven three service truck. Then we got little dumpers over here. Combos, bigger wheel loaders. All cool stuff. Can't tow it home with a pickup. When I started doing what I did, I was living on a half acre in a subdivision, so I had to keep it to what could fit in a garage, what looked halfway normal in a driveway, and what could sit on a trailer and not be too inconspicuous, like a skitter or a mini axe. Now that we've got the farm, though, something about this size, mainly just because you can get old, non-John Deere versions like, for six, seven grand usually. Something like that would be convenient for a couple upcoming projects, but definitely wouldn't be something worth keeping long term. Something about this size would be nice. I ran this one and it's, uh, it's about as sloppy as it looks.
thousand hours. Way tighter than this bobcat next to it. Okay, here we go. 723.21. They were in there doing something. This one shows 270 hours. I don't believe that. Runs and operates. Well, that about does it for today. I've been out here for just over four hours and when I went to go grab a beverage, truck's at 102, truck, Prius at 102. So I'm looking forward to some AC. I'm not looking forward to 100 miles home in rush hour, but such is life. I'll stay tuned. Hopefully there'll be a follow-up video of me winning some stuff, and if I do, I'll make one of coming back here to pick it up. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.